This right here is Xiaomi's Mix 4. It's the world's first Snapdragon 888 Plus phone. It's also Xiaomi's first under display camera phone. And I've seen now four of them, this being the fourth, and by far this is the best. The tech is definitely maturing and for a first attempt, Xiaomi has done an excellent job with this. The Mix 4 also has a ceramic body on it. It does have 50 watt wireless charging, 120 watt wired charging, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 108 megapixel main camera, 13 megapixel ultra wide, five times optical zoom periscope camera, which is eight megapixels. The screen on the front, 120 hertz. It's an AMOLED screen. So let's have a look at what we get inside the box here. Just to mention too that this is a bought unit that I got from Trading Shenzhen. It took about uh, 10 days to get here. So the charger, 120 watts. I've seen this charger before with the original Mi 10 Ultra. Super quick, so 22 minutes to fully charge this phone is amazing. Sometimes it's about 23, 21 or 25, but it's always very, very quick. Type A to type C cable. They do include a 3.5 millimeter adapter, so no, there is no headphone jack on this particular phone. And we get a clear TPU case. This phone has a really nice build to it. It's a little bit heavy in hand. You notice that when you first get it out of the box that this one weighs 229 grams, according to my scales. Now on the side here, thickness, we're looking at eight millimeters, but when you include that camera, that then brings it up to approximately 11, almost 12 millimeters. So that is quite a camera bump. You can really compare it to that of the Mi 11 Ultra, which I have here. I've also got a review of that one in the channel. It's a little bit smaller because it doesn't have the OLED screen on the back of it, but it's a similar kind of style, the way it does protrude and stick out. Very similar sizes, both of these phones here. So we'll do a bit of a comparison really between both of these. So here we have on the back ceramic with this very nice curved edges, does feel great in hand. And then the front screen, this is covered with Gorilla Glass Victus. The frame around the outside is aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you're from, of course. Fingerprint reader, it works fast, it is accurate, and I've not had any problems with it at all. You can see that we ha do have a little bit of a chin down the bottom here. The bezels overall are quite slim. And the star of the show here, of course, is this the camera, okay, which is the under display camera. You can't even see it. Barely see this thing at all. And I'll focus on that a little bit, of course, in this review as well as the quality you can expect out of that. Now that shimmering you're seeing right now with the display, that's because I've got DC dimming off at the moment and I'm running 120 Hertz. It's just on camera that that is showing. Down the bottom, we've got a Type-C port. So this does not support video out, sadly. It's something that Xiaomi really does need to add to their flagship phones at least. Some tray that does take two nanosim, so no micro SD card support, microphone, downwards firing loudspeaker. So these are Harman Kardon speakers, and there's one here in the earpiece too. So I did turn on the DC dimming, so you can see that there's no more shimmering coming through in this display, and I'll keep it on throughout the rest of the review, so it just looks a lot better there. So the earpiece, of course, right here, there is a little gap for it, and the sound's transmitted through that for that secondary loudspeaker. And then finally, up here at the top, you can see the Harman Kardon branding, IR transmitter, secondary loudspeaker, and microphones. There's a little tiny port here as well. That is just to let out a bit of sound there with the speaker. Now, I wanted to show you next to the Axon 30, which also has a under display camera. This one, very, very hard to see. You can just make it out at certain angles. There is a little square here, but with the Mix 4, very hard to see, and like I mentioned before, it's only because of the cutout in the screen protector that I can actually see that there is supposed to be a camera there. So that's with a white background. Let's bring it up a little bit closer here. See on the Axon, and then on the Mix 4. Very, very good. And if I change this over now to just a dark background, you'll see that both of them, even with the dark backgrounds here, really good. Can't see it. And no, can't see it really at all. Again, it's just the screen protector giving it away. Then side by side with two other phones here that have under display cameras, the Axon 30 and the Z Fold 3. To me, the Xiaomi Mix 4 here clearly superior. It has the world's best under display camera. I believe it does hands down wins right here. You can tell, especially when you zoom in to the selfie shot, you can see that the lack of resolution 
on the Fold 3, clearly showing, and then look at all those details that the Mix 4 is able to capture. It's just got the superior shot. So this phone has a stunning display. It's just full HD plus resolution, so it's not a quad HD plus one at all, but still I find that it's fine. Now it is an OLED or AMOLED screen, should I say here. 120 Hertz is the refresh rate, but I'll put it onto 60 right now just for the DC dimming. So it is not flickering away as just mentioned, it's just on camera that it is doing that. So the resolution is 1080 by 2400 with this. And again, looking at that under display camera, you really cannot see it at all. Now, very vibrant screen. I have measured the brightness on this one. And according to my light meter, I'm seeing around with this one about 840 or so nits, which is very good. You can make it out in direct sunlight. It's not the brightest display I've seen out there. It's not as bright as the Mi 11s. And it's a similar kind of display though, compared to that one or compared to the Mi 11 Ultra, which of course I do have right here too as well, that one, and really similar. The bezels do look a little bit different. Of course, we've got the cutout with that one. I prefer this more squared off looking screen, although the edges, they are curved slightly, but they're not excessive like the Mate 40, which was just for me a little bit over the top with that one. It's a great screen, very deep looking blacks, and overall, I think everyone's gonna be quite pleased with this one. Now the options we get here, Dark mode, of course, anti-flicker mode is mentioned on. So this is limiting us to only 60 Hertz, unfortunately with that. So I would really love them to be able to somehow do this. I think it's a hardware limitation, but to also have it at 120 Hertz would be perfect for those sensitive to it. So as soon as I put it onto 120, you can see the banding's coming through. And that is why I'm going to keep it on 60 there and turn that DC dimming back on. Now only certain people are sensitive to that. Now we've got that AI image engine, which helps to improve things. And there's also a lot of different things you can go under here. So other color scheme, you can change all that. Saturated original color, tweak it, tweak your white balance. Pretty standard settings there for MIUI 12.5. So the phone, the UI, very good. The performance I would rate as being really the same as this, the Mi 11 Ultra. It is super quick and smooth especially when you're in the 120 hertz mode. So the UI runs at 120 frames per second constantly. Some apps like YouTube, for example, in the comments, does only run at 60. And you notice that difference when you go over to it. Or the settings won't be in some areas at 120 frames per second. That's just a minor complaint from me that I hope that they can make it streamlined or just force 120 frames per second throughout the UI. Everything is very, very quick and fluid. Multitasking is great. Haptics also feel good on this model. It's strong, nice little bursts, and I like it. I think it's good the haptics on this particular model here. So if I go over now and just take a quick look at a few different things I wanted to point out. So that's the new firmware that came through, the 12.5 enhanced, okay? And this is the internal storage. So with this particular model here, I have UFS 3.1, but 128 gigabytes worth of it and the eight gigabytes of RAM. So it's like the lower end version of this particular model. So that's still very, very good speeds here that we were able to achieve really quick. And that's definitely not gonna hold things up. Almost 2000 on the sequential reads. Geekbench five score here, decent, very good. The Snapdragon 888 plus now. So it is an improvement, but it's got one thing that I don't like about it. Uh, it may be faster, but it certainly generates a lot more heat. So what is this? This is a lot of different satellites, but it's just to prove that it does have dual frequency support here. So it picks up uh, both of the carry, carry frequencies there. And you see a lot of satellites, accuracy down to three meters, good average signal strength, no problems with the GPS at all on this model. So this is the issue. This is the Achilles heel of such a powerful chipset. I have found personally the Snapdragon 888 series to be, well, not that impressive really. I still prefer my favorites actually Snapdragon 870 because it doesn't normally run into this issue. Got too hot. It told me that the data and even the wireless and GPS was going to be restricted because of that heat it generated. In fact, it caused Antutu to crash. So I had to wait about 30 minutes for the phone to cool down and then ran it again and got this absolute crazy score here, over 800,000. So yeah, it is an absolute monster this one. Very, very quick, but generates a lot of heat as a result. So we do have a wide vine level one cert here, even though this is the Chinese model, uh, you can install Google Play Store, it's not a problem, you just install it, but Netflix works in full HD, however, Amazon Prime Video does not. It's stuck in standard definition, why is that? That's because 
it's not whitelisted by Amazon. Amazon still need to whitelist the device IDs to have it approved, and it's not at the time of this video. That hopefully will change later on. Camera 2 API support is level 3, so look for some GCAM ports for the Mi 11. They'll work on this one. Wireless is excellent. Very, very, very good wireless speeds on this. And in fact, they are a little bit better than what I'm seeing on my Mi 11 Ultra here, you can see. Slightly better, but gigabit speeds and very, very good speeds down at the lower point in the house with less signal strength. It holds the signal very fast, stable, and even the battery life. So battery life is better. This is 120 hertz too, by the way. Screen's calibrated to 200 nits. It runs until it gets to 200, 20%, sorry. And that's the result. So 10 hours and 36 minutes versus my Mi 11, which gets here eight hours, almost nine hours. So there's quite a bit of a difference in the battery life, and I didn't really expect to see that much of a difference there from it. So 4,500 million hour battery in this. Realistically, you're looking around seven hours of on-screen time with this, which is very good considering how fast it is and 120 hertz, of course. Now the charge time, as mentioned before, it's just over 20 minutes, 120 watts, so quick. Then the audio, how do the loudspeakers sound compared to the Mi 11 Ultra? They're very similar and both of these phones, they do have good dual loudspeakers on them. So if you want to use this, which is 3.5 millimeter tech, you need to use that adapter. They do a supply in the box. The sound quality, type C to then 3.5 millimeter is good. Voice call qualities, excellent. I've had no issues with it. I've placed calls on this phone, both of them there. So first up, I'm going to test here the Mix 4. This is gonna be at 100% volume and then the Mi 11 Ultra. Let me know in the comments which one you think sounds better. To me, they're very similar, both great. So what is the Triple Eight like at gaming? Very good, of course. It is Qualcomm's best, but it does have that problem that I mentioned about it overheating. Now with a game like PUBG, which is a light title, it's not really demanding, you won't run into that problem. It'll get warm, but a game like Genshin Impact will get up to about 52 degrees on the phone. It will trigger, if you run the high settings, that is the highest possible settings, trigger that warning about thermals. But I'm gonna test PUBG out now. So you get the extreme frame rate option with HDR, HD balanced, all of these. And if you go on to Ultra HD, that then of course drops it down. So I will test it out now on HD, just how PUBG performs. Captain Obvious here. So having the fastest Qualcomm chipset, the fastest Android phone, basically at the moment, that this PUBG performance is really good. Okay, very, very smooth looks great and no lag, no hiccups, no problems. So thermals with this game are not gonna be a problem. Yes, it gets warm, okay? Warm to the touch on the back, it will get up to about 48 degrees, but it won't get into the 50s. When it gets into the 50s, that's an 2-2 benchmark, for example, or running the 3D Mark benchmark on loop, just continually doing that, testing it, testing it or Gen Shed Impact is when it will run into those thermal problems. And our front facing camera, the under display camera here, is probably the best I've seen with this kind of tech. Now it still looks a little bit soft, doesn't it? Like there's some halo kind of effect going on, a little blurriness to it. So it's not 100% perfect and not like a normal front facing camera. So we get 1080p footage here with this one. It does have quite a bit of a crop due to the electronic image stabilization. And what I would really like to see on Xiaomi's flagships is one day, hopefully 4K, 30 at least with the front facing camera. I mean, come on, they are flagships. They really should have that. This quality, I think, is okay, but as I just mentioned, that it's not going to be as good as other normal front facing cameras. So I can shoot 4K, 60, 30, 8K as well video. And right now, this is the main camera. So electronic image stabilization, optical stabilization. I can pull back here and then use the ultra wide. Now, when you zoom in, doesn't always happen, but sometimes at five times, it will then swap over to our five times optical camera. So right now, this is digital, it looks bad, but then there you go. You can see it's gone over now, 
to the five times optical camera. Now this is all handheld, pointing at that yacht there. And I'll increase this to now that seven times and now 10 times zoom. Looking at that boat, the focus is having a bit of an issue just then. So go back, right back here, over to our main camera now. So back to one times zoom. And I just test out that electronic image stabilization. Just going to jog ahead. I roll, the stability seems to be quite good here and this footage quality. And lastly, back to the ultra wide camera there. Now to quickly recap here, this has the best UDC or under display camera that you can currently get at the time of this video. So compared to the Axon 30, Fold 3 and even the Axon 20, the first gen one, this is so much better. But it still will not be quite as good, especially when you look at video quality of that of a normal front facing camera. So it's one thing to bear, but this kind of tech is ideal for people that don't really care too much about front facing cameras. They don't take a lot of selfies, they don't shoot vlogs and you want the full screen experience, you don't want to have a notch, a cutout, or anything like that, it certainly looks great. And you can really not see this one. It's only when you look at it really close at certain angles, or you just see the cutout of the screen protector, you realize that, oh, there's actually a front-facing camera there. So the ceramic build, fantastic, very good. It is a bit of a heavy phone. It's over 220 grams. And the thickness of it's not bad, but yes, the camera does protrude by quite a bit. So really fast charging, 120 watts, and it takes about 22 to about 25 minutes to fully charge. In the process, it will get quite warm though. It goes over 50 degrees Celsius. 50 watt wireless charging, which is around about 30 minutes. Unfortunately, I don't have that charger with me, so I can't get the exact time for you myself. Screen is great but it doesn't support DC dimming at 120 hertz. It's only 60 hertz, but good to see we have that option. However, I don't think it's quite as good as the Mi 11 screen. I think that one's better, okay? Slightly better screen. Mi 11 Ultra screen is also very similar to this one. Both very good screens there. So, what else? What is the con? Why is this video called Mix for Mixed Impressions? Well, mixed, sorry, opinions. The mixed opinions on this one was, well, for me, the camera choice, 108 megapixel HMX sensor from Samsung. It's a very good sensor, don't get me wrong, but it's actually a little bit dated now for late 2021. So I really wish they went with the GN2 in this, the same camera as the Mi 11 Ultra, but I guess they didn't do that because they don't want to compete with their own model. The other thing is the Snapdragon 888 Plus. It's a good chipset, but it reminds me of the Snapdragon 810 days or the 801, those chips that used to get really hot and overheat. They had a lot of thermal problems. And the 888 series for me is exactly that. They get too hot. So if you play a demanding game for long periods, any of those really super demanding games on the highest possible settings, expect this to get over 50 degrees Celsius. The chipset will overheat. It triggers a warning. It will even boot you out of the game for example, the Antutu benchmark that I ran when it was just a little bit too warm to start with, 
got so hot it quit and actually went out and closed the app down and then gave me that warning about it being just too hot. So that is the Achilles heel, that is the thing about this phone, the only real major con is that if you intend to game long periods, expect that heat. And that was without the case on it too as well. Yep, it is very, very hot, that new chipset. I actually prefer the Snapdragon 865 Plus or the 870 is my new favorite chip because it does not get as hot and still delivers very, very good performance there. So that's it, the full story of the Xiaomi Mix 4 first Snapdragon 888 Plus phone and their first under display camera phone from Xiaomi.